Now this is a very unpleasant surprise. Um, this is bad fuel, old fuel residue that's built up on the uh, inside lining of the tank. Now very fortunately just by the luck of the draw, if you can see that shiny gray piece down the middle. This tank is made of aluminum. And because of that, you're not going to get the rust issues. As you can see, these here two screws here have both rusted quite dramatically from the moisture that the, uh, the fuel or the ethanol, I'm assuming in the fuel, absorbed and caused this, uh, this gooey stuff to build up. It's, uh, it's uh, gritty, soft, but now this will have to be cleaned out. This tank, this bike will is quite honestly is not worth much without it. This tank, uh, because to replace this tank, I mean, this particular bike is probably eighteen or nineteen hundred dollars. So, not worth replacing uh, on a bike this old, unfortunately, unless you're really mad about the model. Now, using a flashlight and a bore camera. Um, and I picked this. this is not high-tech stuff. This is pretty cheap stuff. This is an $80 bore camera and a, um, a $4 LED light to shine inside the tank. Tank's pretty good. It's aluminum, I think, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so I don't have to worry about rust, but I still have a severe, as you can see, there's scaling, uh, fuel buildup, bad fuel. Now what happens is, um, is that this tank um, basically is... Uh, was left without um, any kind of stabilizer in the fuel and it was uh, ethanol fuel so therefore um, sadly there's uh, a buildup a scale buildup now I'm very lucky is that buildup comes out very very easily now, I've used this here gizmo here which is nothing but a um, a, uh, a snake um, okay it's a magnet snake and I can use this here to scrape some of that off. It actually has a bit of an edge there. This stuff's really soft and I'm, I'm very lucky. And uh, I've been able to scrape most of it off in through, the, in through the hole here just by reaching in with a screwdriver or this. Or I actually had a vacuum clean out brush here that I've used um, just to spin around inside there to scrape as much of that off as possible. It's a very thin coat and it's not attached to the aluminum very well. Uh, which made this job a lot easier. But I still have a lot of work to do. So I've mixed, um, I've used this ballast doll. This is something I use, uh, I've used with firearms to, to get off stubborn, uh, stubborn carbon deposits out of guns and it's worked brilliantly. Um, and I've also tried uh, some biodegradable stuff here. Okay, and that's worked reasonably well although uh, I've noticed it's eating away at some of the brass um, test pieces I put in uh, in the full concentration so we'll try that and then good old soap and water and elbow grease and see how those work now as you can see um, I've had tremendous luck cleaning out the inside of this tank and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be if you recall, uh, when I started this, the, uh, the tank had a golden crust. It started here and it was lying the entire tank on the inside. And fortunately, using a pressure sprayer and some dish detergent, soaking and spraying and soaking and spraying, I was able to get a pressure sprayer with a long thin wand inside, kept spraying around, spraying around. And then when it eventually filled with water, I tip it over and spill everything out and went back in over and over again, probably about three times. And um, the tank is now sparkling clean inside and out. Very, very happy. Now the fuel cap uh, in that first clip, you'll notice was really gummed up. And I was managed to scrape off a lot of that crusty stuff and the gooey stuff. The two screws are beyond saving, they're so corroded that I couldn't even get a screwdriver into them so I have to use a vice grip here. The rest of the bike actually wasn't difficult to clean. It was it appeared as though it had been kept inside for most of its life and a lot of the dirt and grime wiped right off with uh, just conventional car cleaner. This cap once it was cleaned and the screws replaced it was actually in really good shape so uh, 
I put some uh, some light oil on some of these parts and some grease and uh, should be good to go. Now, as you can see, um, this panel here uh, actually looks pretty good shape. It was very, very faded. And a couple days ago, I came up with a concoction that I learned about online. Uh, actually, one of the local body shops guy told me about it also. But basically, it's a mixture of 40% linseed oil and 60% paint thinner mixed together and dabbed on with a rag, then wiped, rubbed in and wiped off. And my goodness, I cannot get over how it brought that plastic right back to black. I've tried Mother's Back to Black, and I've tried Armor All and all those uh, task-specific formulations you can buy at your local auto dealer but, uh, or auto supply shop, but nothing has worked as well as that. Now, somebody else had mentioned automatic transmission fluid. I've tried that. That worked well, too. But this stuff, actually, uh, this mixture of uh, linseed oil and paint thinner, some people just mix it 50-50. I went with a slightly uh, more watery mix with a higher thinner, 60-40, and it worked fantastic, and it kept that nice, rich, shiny black color and has not faded down at all. The folks who mentioned it to me say they've had luck with up to a couple of years without having to retreat, so clearly the linseed oil is soaked into the plastic and brought it back to black. I'm very impressed with that, and I highly recommend it. I have not put it on any painted parts because the paint thinner, I'm, I'm assuming, might dull the finish or even in some cases take it off. But on black plastic, such as this harness cover and some of these anodized parts, which technically aren't painted, it has worked wonders. I've also worked around up here on the switch gate without avoiding the, the of course the markings on the switch cluster uh, I've been able to uh, to darken that down a little bit too I'll just zoom that in and show you and it has worked brilliantly it brought that red right back the red was actually pretty good on this bike but it brought that red nice bright red and that deep rich black it's done a fantastic job very pleased the rear fender uh, was covered in chain lube and dirty and it was a little bit faded so using my concoction it cleaned right up and it came back to a nice rich black and it really looks good so the exhaust is a whole different matter it's uh, it was severely corroded down underneath the belly of the engine. So I just used Mother's Metal Polish, a water spray bottle, and a drill with a wool buffing wheel attached. I find the drills get enough heat and speed to do a better job than trying to do this by hand, which would have taken weeks. So the idea is to spin the uh, wheel. You can see a little bit of lint flying off of it, brand new wheel but to spin that up and rub it into the metal until the paste turns black and that's when you know it's really working. Once it turns black, if it starts drying out, you spray a little water on it, keep going at it. And with a couple hours work, it was a lot of work, this thing really turned out beautiful, just like chrome. Okay, um, <clears throat> the paint and bodywork, I'm very lucky, is in really good shape. However, I'm zooming in here on the, uh, the tank, and you can see, zoom out here a little bit, that there are some, some scuffs and scratches here, which is very common, as we all know, on sport bikes, people leaning over top of this. Um, there are ways to counteract it, you can buy guards. Or you can just live with it. You know, it's very common on, on motorcycles, and it's nothing to be alarmed by, but it's, uh, it's easy to clean up. You can't do it over and over again, but there's ways to take uh, to polish this down and make it uh, a little more pleasing to the eye. 
So what I've, I'm going to do, you'll also notice right here, there's just a touch of a dent there, but that's, look, that we'll have to live with that. What it would cost to fix that and the return on the value of this bike, it just isn't, just isn't worth it. So anyway, I'm going to show you how, how I polish out uh, imperfections in paint. Um, had a tremendous luck with a good system that I, I'm very comfortable with uh, and I was comfortable with from the beginning and I'm truly a newbie at polishing but this system is uh, very very forgiving but does fantastic results and I'll show it to you. Okay what I use here is a uh, this is a very cheap as you can see it's a Simonized brand I bought it at an auto parts store just a Simonized brand wheel it's adjustable uh, speed, um, plastic housing, this metal up top here has a bracket and I bought this quick detach uh, from 3M, this quick detach collar for the 3M pads and this is a 3M perfected foam polishing pad number 5707 and uh, in conjunction with this pad and I store it, you can use it over and over again, keep it clean um, you can see I just started using this here one but this, you, you use both sides of the pad, but if you keep cleaning it after every use, you can use these here for long, long periods of time. Um, I use it in conjunction with the 3M um, Perfected Machine Polish 6064. Um, it's what they call uh, level two. There's level three, which I'll show you in a second. Level one is basically a wool polish with a, uh, a rubbing compound. I've never, um, that's outside of my expertise. But level two and three with the much, much finer abrasive is a little more forgiving. And uh, use a good wheel, or don't even need a good wheel, a, a, a wheel though, that uh, you don't need a random orbital one, you need a, a normal spinning wheel. Um, polish in the matching pad and it usually goes quite easily. Once you get it down, uh, once I get most of the scuffing off, and uh, then I move to the uh, 3M06068. Uh, so the next step up, the number three, this is ultra fine machine polish. So the black stuff is machine polish, the light blue stuff is ultra fine machine polish. And it too has its own pad. Here's a pad I use for that. That is a 05708, 05708 uh, blue pad. And I store it in its own bag. I don't let these things hit the ground. I don't want to get any, these are to me worth a lot of money. So uh, each uh, pad and, and, a, and a jug of this uh, compound is 60 bucks. And then the collar here is probably another $20. So, but you can use it over and over again. And one of these bottles will probably do far more than I'll ever do. So, uh, so anyway, I'll show you how I do it. Uh, the only thing you need, is from, aside from what I've showed you, is a water spray bottle. And I'll show you how I use that. Okay, so here's how you do this. Um, got my pad here, uh, and I pay, put on just a one circle, okay? And uh, just like that, okay? And that's probably more than enough to do this whole tank, okay? And then what I do is I keep my spray bottle here. Here's what I'm gonna do, and you'll see this. As I polish, this compound will get smeared out here all nice, and it'll be wet, and you'll be working with it. It'll start to dry out. And you're inclined to put more polish on, as opposed to doing that, is spray some water, just a couple squirts. That'll soften the polish right back up into a paste and keep working with it. And that allows the paint to get warm. So the idea is you, you do a little bit, you feel for warmth. When you get, you get that warmth going, which is the whole idea of using a wheel, is to get the heat in that paint into the clear coat in this case, it softens up and it smooths out and it turns into a super glossy finish. And uh, after I get this all glossed up again, I'll put a 3M uh, rock guard over here to prevent that from happening again. But right now, let's get to the polishing. I've cleaned the tank, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've cleaned the tank uh, with a waterless cleaner. Just sprayed it down, wiped off with a microfiber cloth. There's a few other areas on the body that I'm gonna work on. I'm just going to show you how I do this here, scratching in the tank. So I'm going to show you here before and then after. Here's before. 
You'll also notice here some scuffing. This scuffing is from, uh, it doesn't wash off, that's not dirt, that's actual scuffing from that bra that was on the tank. It's okay to use those bras if that's what you want, but you need protection underneath because a bra will do more damage or as much damage as your leg would. Now I bring the uh, the speed of this. This this um, wheel goes from the speeds run from one up to six. So I put it halfway on this one. That's three. Now how much weight am I putting on here? Because uh, it's already starting to come this beautiful gloss. It just comes out so quickly. Um, how much weight am I putting on here? Not much. I'm not pushing down. I'm just basically allowing the weight of the machine to do all the pushing, okay? The only thing I'm using this hand for is to keep from spinning sideways. But I'm not pushing down. I'm not pushing down back here either. Another thing you want to be mindful of, these decals are clear coated. If these decals were not clear coated, I'd stay away from them. Because what would happen is this would probably wipe off or start damaging the edge of the deck. So now what I'm going to do is take my microfiber cloth and just wipe away and I can already see this gorgeous deep gloss coming right out of this paint. It's unbelievable. Now what I'm doing here, aside from taking a look at how far I'm getting, is to see if there's any scratches that I'm not getting to. Some of them are so deep, they're deep into the color and if I try to work too deep at getting at those, all I'm going to do is damage. I'm going to take off too much clear coat, and what will be left is, uh, well, the worst thing is if I hadn't done anything at all. So that's as far down as I'm going to get there, and it looks excellent. Take a look. Now, as you can see, there's a damage there, but that looks like a flaw in the original paint. Um, but all those scratches, they're all gone. Now, this is just the first step. The second step will actually polish this down even shinier. Look at that. Unbelievable. Now, you see right there, another scratch right at the tip of my finger. And that's something that's deep, deep, deep. So, we're not going to have a whole lot of luck without damage going too deep to take that out. But all those scuffs down here from the bra are all gone. And then, once again, this is just the first step. Now, I'm about to switch wheels and, and compounds here. Some people will say that just waxing by hand um, with a polishing wax or even a, a mild rubbing compound will do the same job. I've tried that and I tried it for years and years and years and I never got good results. What, what I would get is scuffing and hazing in swirls, um, primarily because there wasn't enough um, friction to create warmth, some heat in the paint, uh, which is what the wheel does. And once I took the plunge and paid, I think I paid $55 for that wheel, and I paid probably $50 or $60 for this compound and, and pad, and $50 or $60 for that compound and pad. So you're up to $150 plus a $20, up to $180 thereabouts. But the time and the, the finish that I get, the time I save and the finish I get from these, from, from basically, I'm, I'm very much amateurish with this stuff. I get fantastic results. Um, and I'm so pleased that if I'd have known it was going to be this easy, I would have gone to this system a long time ago. You can see here in the sunlight the phenomenal job that the, uh, the polish does. And it's very user-friendly. Um, it's uh, perfect for a newbie like myself. Uh, just the shape and the pounding of the metal of the uh, of the uh, the tank itself shows through the paint. It's it's just exceptionally exceptionally smooth and glossy. And of course, as I mentioned in the paint video, I need to soften the edge of the lower paint repair. So what I'm doing is I'm having the wheel spin uh, off of the edge as opposed to against it. And while I'm doing it, I touch up some of the side a little bit. Very easy.